Hello, in this video, I'll show you how to process and color grade your raw images when it comes to Photoshop. So this is going to be focusing majorly on color grading or making your raw photos better when it comes to Photoshop and camera raw in general. And if at all you have Lightroom, you can as well use Lightroom. But later on, we are going to be proceeding into Photoshop to do other color grading adjustments. So simply like the video and don't forget to subscribe. So this photo that we're using today was taken by Kobe Shots and I'll as well link his YouTube channel. He's an amazing photographer and also a content creator on YouTube. So check the link in the description of the video so that you can get these raw files from his YouTube channel. So in order to work on this very image to color grade it, first of all import it and since this is a raw file as you can see, it is going to automatically open up in Camera Raw. So Camera Raw is basically a filter or an engine that is going to help us process or convert the raw image into a JPEG file that is supported by Photoshop. So if at all you have Lightroom, you can as well use Lightroom to do these steps as I'm about to show you in this very video. So the very first thing I tend to do when it comes to working with a raw file is working on the contrast and lighting issues regarding the image. So usually I tend to come to my highlights and I prefer to drop the highlights of my images just like that to recover information in the highlights or the whites of the image. Then I do the same basically for the whites. But when you do this or when you overdo this, it tends to make the image look a little bit darker. That is why I come to my shadows and I open up the shadows and I take the blacks down to get more contrast into the image. Then I'll come and add more contrast to the image and slightly open up the overall exposure of the photo. You can see the before, after, before, after. The image now looks a little bit better than where we started. Once I'm done doing those simple adjustments, I'll come down to our color mixer. And in color mixer, we are going to be playing around with different colors in the image. So in color mixer, we have hue, saturation, and luminance. Basically, when we are dealing with hues, we are dealing with changing a color. Hue is basically about changing a color in the image. So for example, in case you look at the greens in this case, and you feel like you want to change or alter the green color to your taste or to your liking, look for where you, you can find the greens in the color mixer. And when you play around with this slider, you can see how it affects the overall greens in the image. So when you move the slider towards the right hand side, we are making the greens look like a color below, below it or beneath it, which is the aquas. And moving the slider towards the left hand side, we are basically making the greens look like a color above it, which is the yellows. So that is how hue is going to affect any color in the image. Saturation is the intensity of a color. You can increase or reduce on the intensity of a given color in the image. Then you can see, for example, the blues. You can increase on the intensity of the blues or reduce on the intensity of the blues. So luminous deals with the brightness levels of a given color. You can simply increase the brightness of the blues or you can simply darken the blues in the image. So after understanding how all these hue and saturation plus luminous are going to be affecting the image, it is time to incorporate them into working on the image. So for this, since we have majority of the blues and greens in the image, we are going to be dealing with the blues and greens majorly. So for this case, I'll first of all come to saturation because I want the sky to slightly pop. So this is going to be a personal preference. So remember, photography is an art. So even in case you don't love my colors, you can do it your own way. So I'm just going to come, for example, to my blues and I increase an in intensity of the blues to make the sky pop a little bit better. So about 65 is okay to me and i'm just going to come to my greens and slightly increase on the intensity of the greens then i'll come to the luminous and slightly darken the blues in this case just like that to around negative 12 because when you overdo this it tends to create this kind of hollowing effect on some of the highlights in the blues of the image so don't overdo or don't overuse the luminous option and after that i'm just going to come to the hues and i play around with the hue of the blues so for this i'm just going to slightly move it towards the aquas just like that 
And as you can see, you can say before, after, before, after. Once we're done doing these simple adjustments on this very image, you're just going to come, you can as well play around with the skin color regarding the hues. So skin is basically leaning towards the reds, oranges, and a little bit of the yellows. So I can simply come and I decide to add a little bit of yellows just like that to the skin tone. And after doing that, I'm just going to come down to where we can see color grading. So in the color grading panel, we have mid-tones, shadows, and highlights. So you can add a given color regarding the mid-tones, the highlights, and the shadows of the image. So for this, I'm just going to demonstrate for you. So come to the highlights, and you can simply click and you drag around to add a given or specific color in the image. So the closer you move this circle towards the circumference of a given color the more intense that color is going to be and the more you move it towards the center the less of that color is going to be in the image so you can just click and move around to your taste or to your liking so usually i don't tend or prefer to use it in camera raw because we are going to be using it later on in photoshop as i'll show you in this very video so in case you want the image to pop a little bit more, we shall come to calibration. And in calibration, basically, we want to make the image pop. Yeah? Just come to where you see blue primary. Come to where you see saturation. And you can simply increase on the saturation of the blue primary. And you can see how this makes the overall image pop. But don't overdo this. So I'm just going to back down a little. Just like that around... 13 looks okay. You can see the before and after for the calibration. Doesn't do much, but it is creating a kind of subtle feel or effect to the overall image. So just come and click on open to open the photo in Photoshop. So in Photoshop, we are going to be looking at more tools that you can use to color grade your images and make them look better regarding the overall and general colors. So for this kind of image, we are going to first of all look at selective color. So just come to selective color and select it. So for this kind of image, as you can see that we have more blues. So I'm just going to first of all come to our blues in this case and play around with this slider. So just move the sliders to wherever you want. So I'm just going to leave the science towards around 67 i'll just click on the magentas and see how this is going to affect the image so at about negative six looks okay then i'll come the yellows and i see how this will affect the overall image so at about 11 that looks okay then you can as well come the blacks and you see we can brighten or darken the blues in this case so negative 20 looks okay then after that we're just going to come to the aquas because the th the cyans rather because we have a little bit of science in the blues so when it comes to the science just move the science slider so i prefer about 41 so you can increase this to your taste or to your liking so like i said this is going to be a personal taste and preference as a photographer and i'm just going to come to the magentas and i see how this is going to be affecting the image around negative 12 looks okay then let's look at the yellows and see how it will affect the image so let's see this so i prefer around negative 4 you can say before after before after so after doing this you can come and look at other colors for example the greens and the rest of the colors in the photo that you're trying to work on so i'll come to the greens and i look at the science and how the signs are going to be affecting the overall image so at about 29 because it makes this ball pop a little bit more you can see before after then i'm just going to come the magentas and i see the magentas yeah i prefer negative 40 before after then like i said the reason that's why we didn't use the color grading option in camera raw is because we have color balance right here in photoshop so I'll just come to color balance right here and select color balance. So after selecting color balance, you can see that we have shadows, 
mid-tones and highlights. So for this, you can simply add a given color. For example, in case you want the mid-tones to have a little bit of greens, select the mid-tones and you move the green slider towards the right hand side. And this is going to add a little bit more of the greens to the mid-tones and you can as well play around with this or add yellows or cool down the overall mid-tones in the image. So I'm just going to add a little bit of blues to the mid-tones and I'm going to come to the mid-tones still and you can add a little bit of reds to the mid-tones just like this. You can see before and after for the color balance. But one thing I, that you have to take into consideration you don't always have to overdo your color grading. Make sure you settle with every adjustment that you tend to do to your photo or to your image. So you can as well come to the shadows and decide to cool down the shadows just like that. So I'm just going to add a little bit of blues to slightly cool down my shadows to around 3. That looks okay. One thing I forgot, you can as well play around with selective color. Double click on the selective color icon and you can come to the blacks and you can make the blacks a little bit more cinematic just like that to add a little bit richer details to the blacks in the image. So you can say before and after for just the selective color and the before and after for the color balance. So these are the tools I tend to use when it comes to color grading when it comes to Photoshop and I hope you have benefited from this very good and insightful kind of video don't forget to like the video and don't forget to subscribe if you have been watching and you are not a subscriber to this channel ronix from ronix photography thank you for watching and i'll see you in yet more videos on this channel don't forget to keep practicing and as well keep creating